This is another unit a friend gave me when she moved out to Colorado. She dumped her uh, her broken equipment on me and I don't think this one is broken actually. It's just never used. She took Spex Howard Broadcasting School and I guess they had them all get these little mixer units to do their mixtapes and play around like a professional. She did get a broadcasting job once. Unfortunately she didn't only got one and never went back to it. Kind of sad. A talented woman, but she's kind of wasted her life. Anywho, she didn't give me the 6-volt adapter. Apparently its center pin is negative, according to the label on back. I'll try to find a 6-volt adapter. I'll probably just run on batteries meanwhile, though. So this would be a good little unit for me to use. I was thinking, I mean, it's been sitting around my house for years. I've probably been sitting out for a decade or two. God, that long. Almost two decades. Um, at any rate, I'm thinking this would be a great unit to use on my test bench as a test preamp if the fidelity is good enough. And I may even use it here in the audio closet as a temporary preamp until I build my uh, wondrous long delayed, 40 year delayed preamp project. Not quite 40, but about that. I would like to take this unit apart, not to really fix it, but there's something rattling around inside. I want to see what that is. And I just want to basically see what chips are in here and how it's built and constructed. You know, if I can sp expect high fidelity out of this or not. And maybe if someone knows how to uh, look up Radio Shack part numbers and uh, can give me the specs in this unit, I'd be much appreciated. Or give me a website that would do that. Give me a link. So I'm going to take a screwdriver to this unit and do a quick look inside. See what we got. It's a little bit of a puzzle to take apart. The real key is taking one of the sides off. As long as both sides are on, you're not going to get the uh, case apart. And three screws across this. There's also um, screws in the front panel, which I took off first. I thought the whole front panel might come out, but it doesn't. Unfortunately, I'm probably going to pull the front panel somehow, which would mean taking all the knobs off and etc. Maybe just the knobs and the equalizers. That might not be too bad. But I, I can't see any chips from here. That's really what I wanted to see is what kind of chips are in this unit. It's got uh, apparently two phono preamps in it. Uh, magnetic or ceramic. Two different phono inputs. And then of course the main preamp out too. So there's got to be like at least three stereo op amps in here. I'm guessing. We'll see later. A lot of bodging in here. If That's probably the way they built them all. But it's kind of strange they have these caps sitting like this. Um, a couple 15k resistors, four of them actually, and jumpers. Of course this is a one-sided PC board so it's going to have some jumpers and stuff. It seems kind of funky the way they did these caps. And these kind of seem like an afterthought too. Maybe they just had to do it for the uh, for the single-sided board. And it's that it's typical kind of cheapy board too that you don't want to put too much heat or stress on when you work on them. Components, same yeah, mid middle grade kind of. See if I can see a brand in these capacitors. They're 16 volters, and of course the whole unit only takes 6 volts, so... Overkill. I want to say it looks like a Capcom or somebody. I'll have to get a better look. Looks like regular good made caps. So this is uh, probably old enough where everything is either Korean or Chinese, uh, Japanese rather, in Korean. It was made in Korea, but it's probably mostly Japanese parts. before trying to really amped up. Well, I didn't get the front off. I can't get these knobs off very easily. I hate to force it and break the uh, slide pots. At some point I just, I couldn't get any of them to go. I was putting a lot of force on them. It's almost like they're glued on or something. So rather than risk breaking it at this point, I'm going to see if I can get a hold of the schematic otherwise without having the of course, if I ever wanted to change them, I'll have to change an IC or something. I'd have to pull those pots out anyway. anyway they're, they're, they're not coming off. They're glued on hard. Uh, saw this little shielded area here. I, it turns out it's just uh, two red wires, one white wire. Let's say they used white along with black for ground interchangeably. This must be a noise filter for the external power input. Seems kind of strange they put it all the way over there, though, when the input's over here. That's kind of how everything runs though. They didn't wash the PC board at all. It's still got all the rosin on it from the factory. 
I guess rosin's non-conductive, ideally. You don't really need to wash it off. Normally they wash it off, though, because they're worried about moisture, um, bacteria, and stuff like that getting into the rosin if it's exposed to moisture and funk for a while. It also tends to collect um, more dust that way, too, if it's not washed off. So that's kind of a not the best thing in the world that they didn't do that. I couldn't find a schematic online. I did find a schematic for a model that seems really close. Mine's the 1100, this is the 1200. So everything's discreet. There is a headphone amp in this model. I'm not sure if mine has that or not. Probably. But otherwise, everything's discreet. And we'll see the power supply is different on this one. This one has a line cord. So that might be the big difference. The U meters are driven by a couple FETs. And after that, all the different sections are all NPN transistors, I believe. It's kind of hard to see which way the arrows are going. Maybe they're PNPs. They're NPNs. That makes sense. NPNs you can get a little cheaper than PNPs, a little more gain than PNPs, which makes them hard to match up sometimes when you're doing complementary symmetry. So, it's a lot of typical, you know, probably this isn't going to be my hi-fi instrumentation grade preamp. I'm going to have to build the circuit that uh, John Audio Tech. If you haven't seen that circuit, I strongly recommend going over to John Audio Tech, all one word, and um, looking at his lab preamp, his test bench preamp. I'm probably going to be building that or something very close to what he did there. Uh, the other comment I had on this ant, um, circuit is the way they did the ceramic pickup. I was thinking, well, maybe I can change some of these ceramic pickups to make them just auxiliaries. But no, I'm going to have to just jump this all out, you know, and go right to the source with my, uh, if I want auxiliary, you know, maybe dewire it and then wire it right down to the, uh, that's something I can do one of the channels. I want another auxiliary. I don't probably don't need two phonographs. That'd be nice. It'd be nice if I could keep the magnetic side. And uh... So, it's kind of strange what they did here though. They, instead of having a more direct, the ceramic doesn't need the gain of this circuit. This is additional circuitry for the magnetic preamp because um, the magnetic signal is a lot smaller. The ceramic signal is a lot stronger and typically they don't go through a preamp like this. But in this one it does. They just attenuated and equalized a little bit with, and sent it into here, which is kind of strange because this, this preamp has got a lot of EQ. It's got the RIIA EQ on it, you know, and this is like partially undoing it and attenuating and sending it into here. Anyway, that's interesting. I would, you know, normally you'd expect a ceramic. Of course, it serves the purpose of not having to have a switch or anything, I guess. Interesting.